the center of this whole temptation wasn't, um, Jesus, I want to prove that you can't heal. I want to prove that you can't bring someone's finances up. I want to prove it wasn't that. The center of the temptation was, I'm going to prove that you are not the Son of God. I'm going to prove you wrong of who you think you are. And that, that caught me. Because the word in Greek used here to tempt is perazo, which means to prove wrong or to prove evil. So Satan is trying to say, I want to prove you that you're no different than I am. You're exactly the same person as me. He says, if you are the son of God, he's trying to make them deny his essence, deny who he is, who the Father called him to be. How many of you have ever been in a situation where you as a Christian have to either stand up or stand up? Mm -hmm. Amen. Only one <laughs> or two. What I find interesting is that Jesus doesn't respond saying, people say that I am. We didn't say, philosophy says that I am. But it's like, you know what? I learned in college that I am. It's like, it is written. My word says it is written. Amen. The word of God says in John that he, Jesus is the verb. Amen. He is the verb, which means if he is a verb, he is the word. And when Jesus says it is written, he's not saying a book said it. It says, I am saying. I have the last word. Amen. I'm speaking. He knew very well who he was, but also who he was not. Amen. Glory to God. Praise him. He knew he was the Son of God in the very flesh. But he also knew there was authority upon him, that he had someone above him, and it was the Father. If Jesus had the power, and I, I was speaking to someone during this week, I was talking about this, and I told them, sometimes when I feel feel this, if I was Jesus in front of Satan, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna whip you so bad. <laughs> you have no idea what I can do to you. And I told them, imagine that I was talking to this brother and I said, imagine you're sitting right there, and I come in your face. Rob, imagine I'm sitting you right there, and I start dissing you and cursing you and cursing you, and you're not this, and you say you're this, and cursing and cursing and cursing. Your reaction might at some point be, I'm gonna punch you. Get out of my face. But Jesus was one person who knew very well who the Father was. And he said, I'm not gonna do it. Because the Father hasn't said to do it. Jesus said, It is written, the Father spoke, I spoke, the Holy Spirit has spoken, and we shall not fall in your name. We won't do it. We're not going to do what you want us to do. It's so hard when we're tempted to simply say, I can do that. Oh, you want me to get a raise? What do I have to do? No. Um, that one guy over there? Hey, your job? No. Just do this one thing. Just, you know what? Put these five dollars in his pocket and we'll fire him. Because they're going to prove that he stole. And then you're going to get his position. You're going to be manager. Really? Oh my gosh, that's so easy. Why not do it? But the ends don't justify the means. If you're a son of God, 
no matter what situation you are in, you will know that the ends of every situation is going to be to glorify God. Amen. And if your reaction is not according to the word of God, don't justify the means. Don't think that you're doing something right. Don't think that, well, you know what? I deserve that raise. I've been here for four years. Nobody has seen me. And if I do this, everyone's going to see me. That doesn't justify. That will not justify. Not at all. Your identity is in who God has called you to be. Amen. And that is integrity. That is holiness. That is set apart. Be different. Don't fall in the game and show them, you know what? I can live another, another five more years in this position until someone sees me, but I won't do that. Amen. And you know what? I'll wait because my reward isn't here. My reward is up there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. There's a there's a little uh, dilemma that's that's played in psychology. That's it's called Heinz's dilemma, and it's this one man whose wife is sick and she's terminally ill so and this one doctor develops a cure and he says look it's worth two thousand dollars he says okay okay well he said i'll try to get all the money i can to to get it to get it and heinz gets his all the money he can from his friends and family and everybody all together and he gets only one thousand dollars and he goes up to the doctor and says, I only have $1,000. Can, can I get the medicine? And the doctor said, well, actually, it cost me $1,000 to develop it. But no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell it for $2,000. And the dilemma is, if you were Heinz, what would you do? Would you steal to save or try to save your wife's life? Would you kill? What would you do? Or would you simply let your wife die? And uh, the reaction of many people, mostly young people, is that's not fair. It costs him 1,000 to make it and he's selling it for 2,000? And Heinz has a 1,000? You know what? Heinz should steal that money. Sorry, steal that medicine, or go to, or go and rob a bank, or even go and kill that guy and take the medicine from him. But at the end of the day, the means will never prove right. They will never prove right. What if she's terminally ill? She takes a cure. And she still dies because it's not the cure. Did you do something right? Or did you do something wrong and didn't receive what you wanted? Sometimes it's hard to figure out what God's will is. Especially if you're a dilemma like that. Or any dilemma. But if I take the example of Jesus, who wasn't in front of a terminally ill person, or who wasn't losing anything, but was losing his very life in front of him. Jesus was hungry. He was man. He was hungry for 40 days. And he says, look, turn this to bread. No. I'm God. I'm the Son of God. You're trying to prove that I'm not the Son of God? Too bad for you, it's not going to happen. Jesus waited out 40 days. Hunger. When he could have said, you know what? I can turn that stone into bread. But what would happen? You and I would not have a reason to live. You and I would be dead. And we would have Satan 
ruling all things. But this one man, he knew his identity, he knew his vision. And he said, hunger can wait because eternity is coming up for me. Amen. That's eternal life for me and Satan, eternal death for you. I don't know how it excites you, but when we were singing Amazing Grace, my chains are gone. My chains are gone because Jesus chose to not make that stone into bread. Or he chose not to fall into Satan's game. He chose to stick to his identity, no matter how much it cost him. Amen. And imagine later on when the Pharisees come and say, who do you think you are? Do you think Jesus was going to tremble and say, what do I answer? <laughs> Jesus said, I'm, I'm thinking Jesus saying, I got confronted by Satan. What can these guys do? What's worse? Jesus knew who he was no matter the circumstance. Amen. The word says to be like Jesus. That's our purpose. That's our goal. That's why we're here tonight. To be like Jesus. That's everything. That's, that's the sole purpose of this ministry. It's all about Him. It's to be like Him. We're not trying to be like Marcia. We're not trying to be like Pastor Black. We're not trying to be like anyone. We're trying to be like Jesus. Amen. So, I keep reading this. And... As I was reading the temptations and everything, um, the end of the temptation was amazing. It was absolutely amazing, astonishing to me. Like, I read the Bible and I think I'm in there. Like, I'm, I'm with these people, I'm hanging around, I'm chilling with them. So when I read it, I'm, I'm, I'm there with Jesus. And verse 12 and 13 said, And Jesus answered and said to him, It is said, You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every temptation, he left them until an opportune time. Guys, you're going to be tempted several times. Just saying that. Jesus wasn't tempted just once. He was tempted a couple more times. And 14 says, And Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. Ah! And Jesus returned to Galilee in the power of the Spirit. And news about him spread through all the surrounding district. Like, I'm thinking, that one person that <laughs> decides not to take that raise says, you know what, I'm not going to do that. And someone else says, oh my gosh, did you hear about Emily? Emily decided not to take that raise. Oh, she's so dumb. Why did she take it? Well, apparently because she like, believes in this God and wants to do things right. That's pretty awesome. That's pretty awesome. Amen. And everybody starts hearing because you were faithful to God. And at the end, the glory goes to God. Hallelujah. That's the purpose. That's it. That's why we're here. Amen. And it's insane that the Bible tells me that Jesus entered filled with the Holy Spirit, but he left in the power of the Spirit. I, like, I mean, like, he's filled, he's filled. But why did he leave in the power? He defeated Satan right there. What other power can there be? What other thing could hold him back? He, def he defeated Satan. He, he grabbed power. We're singing Amazing Grace. We're singing these beautiful songs. And, and just to tie it up a little bit, Another time that Jesus is tempted is when he's about to be crucified. Satan comes up to him in the mountain of Gethsemane. Two key points. The beginning of the ministry and the fulfillment, the full fulfillment of the ministry. But what happens? It's the same answer every single time. It's the same answer. Doing the will of the Father. 
you saying, Father, I'm paraphrasing, Father, if it's possible, don't let me go through this. I really don't want to die and suffer and be tortured. Like, I don't want to do this. But if it's your will, I'm up for it, man. Oh. It's just, his life was just a roller coaster, up and down, up and down. And then it was just, ah, uh, down spiral of death and death and death. And then, oh, and he rises. It's just amazing. It's just amazing. And because of that, you and I have the power of the Holy Spirit within us. Amen. That's what we sing. When we sing, there is power in the name of Jesus. We're not singing a song. We're singing, this really happened, and because this happened, there is power in the name of Jesus. Amen. There is power for me to believe in Jesus and to say, I'm not going to fall into that trap. Because there's greater power and there's greater life for me ahead than what's going to be here temporarily. Don't ever preach the gospel. Don't ever preach the gospel to be known. Always preach the gospel that he will be known. Amen. Amen. Always preach the gospel that whatever he has done in your life, he will always be glorified. Amen. He will always be exalted. Amen. Amen. And in this 2015, when you think about goals, don't think about what you can accomplish or the good things you will do. That's secondary. God isn't seeking charitable work. God is seeking changeable hearts. If you, are, if you have a heart that's willing to change, that charity, charitable work is going to flow. But if you, have, if you want to do charitable work, you're going to push and push and push and push, and it's not going to happen. It's the fruit of the Spirit, guys. The Spirit of God does, that, does those things for you. And sometimes in 2015, we're going to be led to that mountain, and as, a, as in Greek it says, you're going to be thrusted, you're going to be sent violently, but even when you're sent violently, go willingly. Amen. The more you oppose, the harder it's going to be. The harder, guys, the harder. Let the fruits be natural. Let the fruits flow. Let the name of Jesus be glorified through your life. Amen. I don't have a long message. And um, I simply have a word or to. But I want to finish up with a quote that I stumbled on um, about a week ago, and um, I loved it. And I believe it ties into this message. It ties in to 2015, and it's something that uh, Martin Luther spoke. And it says, This life Therefore, is not righteousness, but growth in righteousness. Not health, but healing. Not being, but becoming. Not rest, but exercise. We are not yet what we shall be, but we are growing toward it. The process is not yet finished, but it is going on. This is not the end, but it is the road. All does not yet gleam in glory, but all is being purified. Wherever you are, if you feel in this adventure that Jesus went through, if you're going up the mountain and you're just meditating on God, or you're at the mountain and you're in God's presence, or you're at the mountain and you're being tempted, or you're going down the mountain with the blessing and in the power of the Holy Spirit, wherever you are, guys, Remember, the process isn't over. It's continuous. 2015 just begun. It just started, guys. Right now. Right now. But before you do anything, define who you are. Define who God says you are. Define your identity. And remember that the ends 
Don't justify the means. 